Prominent Egyptian-American journalist Mona al Tahawi has been on the front lines of the protests, and she has paid a price for it, a high price. Mona joining us right now from Cairo again. You and I spoke yesterday, and you revealed that your hand was broken, your arm was broken uh, by riot police. Uh, how are you feeling the day after now, our last conversation? Hi, Frederica. Well, my left arm is, is hurting a bit, but I'm hanging in there, and, and I've been at Tahir all day because there was no way that I was going to be away. It's the center of the universe. Now, I understand you were down in the square, and you had people signing your cast. That's right. I've got, I've got what I call my love from Tahrir. I, I ask people, because, you know, it's, it's been really incredible. I mean, as, as traumatic as my experience was at the hands of the riot police, every Egyptian who's seen me and who's seen me on, I was on Egyptian television yesterday, every Egyptian who's seen me in Tahrir Square today has stopped me and given me, given me love and given me wishes of, you know, saying get well soon. And so I've asked them to sign my cast for me so that I can take their wishes and their love from Tahrir back to New York when I fly back. Did you feel like it was a big risk to go back down to the square, the place in which your injuries and your arrest started? Well, you know, I wasn't hurt or arrested in Tahrir Square. I was hurt and arrested in Mohammed Mahmoud Street, which is just off Tahrir Square. It's a street that leads into the square. I'm perfectly fine in the square. My only concern today was to stay away from the middle of the throng because of my cast, because there were so many people today. They were really packed in. So I stayed on the edges of the square. That's where I talked to a lot of people. That's where I stopped and took photographs with them. Some, some of them wanted to take pictures of me, and so then I would ask, well, in return, would you sign my cast? So as long I felt perfectly fine as long as I wasn't in the middle of it because I was just worried about the crowds and my cost. Okay, so Egypt's interior ministry did respond after hearing your story uh, being told in, on many different uh, occasions yesterday, different networks, and they are now saying that what happened to you was an isolated incident. It must have been an isolated incident, and they also said that the riot police wouldn't treat women the way in which you described you were treated. What's your response to them? That is absolutely laughable. It's outrageous that they would say that, and they're living on a planet called denial. Ask anybody who has been to Tahrir Square and has experienced any kind of interaction with the, with the right police, and they will tell you, men and women, that they are extremely violent. Ask the women especially what treatment has been like with the right police. Just yesterday, the news broke of another Egyptian journalist who was dragged by her hair through the streets. So many activists, female activists and journalists, for years have been sexually assaulted by the riot police. That statement that the Minister of the Interior made is laughable and is an indication of just how out of touch they are with why we're having a revolution in Egypt. The reason the revolution in Egypt started on January the 25th was to, one of the reasons was to fight police brutality. And clearly, that brutality is still in place. And clearly, the Minister of the Interior is still a corrupt and brutal place that our revolution will continue to target until we are fully free of their brutality. And so Mona, you just called this the revu revolution that began on January 25th and there are other people who have been interviewed there in Tahrir Square who say this is the second revolution. So is everyone kind of in concert as to whether this is a continuation of what transpired in January or if this is something separate, especially since uh, we're now seeing a challenge from demonstrators of military rule looking for civilian rule when the demands were different in January weren't they? Well, the demands were different in January because we were fighting another system. And then we realized that, the, that nine months later, it's the same system. So in that sense, the revolution continues. I say the revolution continues. I don't call this a second revolution. I say this, I say this is the continuation of the revolution that began on January the 25th. Because the Supreme Council of Armed Forces, for me, is Mubarak. I say we replace one Mubarak with 18 Mubaraks. These are all men from the military who are his friends. The, the man who currently runs Egypt, Field Marshal Mohammed Saint Antawi used to be Mubarak's defense minister. He's 81 years old. Mubarak is 83. So, you know, we've replaced one Mubarak with 18 Mubaraks. So, in that sense, for me, the, the revolution continues. And one of the main demands of the revolution all along has been civilian leadership for Egypt. And we're still under a military junta. They said that they would leave after six months. They did not. They kept prolonging their, their rule. And they made so many promises that, they break, that they've broken. So, we don't trust them anymore. So, if you ask anybody in Tahrir Square today, the majority of people will tell you that we want an end to military rule. 
or the chants today, I was following the chants. The chants were that the people want to topple the field marshal, i.e. the people want to get rid of Tantawi, the current ruler of Egypt. The other chants were, we're not going to leave, he should leave, again mm -hmm. targeting field marshal Tantawi. They were also chanting, we want to end military rule. It's clear that yeah. this, that we, Egyptians realize that the, the Supreme Council of Armed Forces has made a mess of ruling Egypt. We want civilian leadership for Egypt. Mona al Tahawi, thanks so much and safe travels. I know you said you were going to be heading back to the United States soon. Safe travels on that.